Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel, or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And as you guys can see above, this is going to be a quick discussion and thoughts on giving my first out of ministry sermon. And um, yeah, by now you guys should have seen my sermon writing blog as well as the video of my first sermon that I gave. And um, this is literally I'm recording this on on Tuesday, actually. So it's two days after my sermon, but you're probably not going to see this up to the following week. Um but just a quick update, um, you guys, I know you got a lot of you guys have been, um, like, contacting me on Instagram and Facebook about where I've been because I didn't post for, like, a week. I had a bunch of videos, like, in my computer, but they weren't edited because I was so busy with the sermon. And if you would have seen the sermon writing vlog, you know how that went. So, yes. But I'm back to being on schedule every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, let's just talk about my experience, you guys. Oh my gosh. Um I have a vanilla latte in my cup right now. And this cup I got from Walgreens, it comes with an infuser and the top that you can put over it. It's so pretty. It has a white one as well, which is right here. So I have a white one that I actually plan to give away to someone. Um as a Christmas gift. So yeah. But, um, before I get into that, let's talk about my sweatshirt, right? I, by the time this video goes up, both of these sweaters should be online. The hoodie I talked about previously in the tag video that I did, um, so you guys know about the mint hoodie that I have, but I did one in an actual sweatshirt so you guys can see how it looks. And, um, here it is. Yes! Let me get the chair out of the way real quick. So here is the sweatshirt, you guys. The one I have is obviously lavender because we love lavender, um, but it is the Bible, which I made larger. Like I said, it was going to be larger, and I made it closer to the neckline. Um, so it's an open Bible with the cross, and then it says soul food. I love, love, love this pairing. And then on the back, it just says daughter of increase or DOI. So again, with the sweatshirt and the hoodie, you can get, excuse me. Let me fix this real quick. So, with the sweatshirt and the hoodie, you can get it in any color that you want. Um, you just tell me what color you want your sweatshirt or your hoodie in. And then as far as the foiling and glitter, it's only going to be three options. Rose gold, which is the one I had. Gold or silver. Um, so that is how that's going to work. So links are down below. Just go to the shop on my blog. Um, I'm thinking of actually... I'm working on a better system for my shop to actually open up a shop, but for now, I'm going to keep it on the blog. I will be working on a lot of things next year for Daughter of Increase, um, but I want to take my time doing everything. But I'm looking at the clock because my brother has to make a video. But, um, yeah, so I gave my first sermon and it was so good. Um, it wasn't a lot of people because it was very, it was like a rainy, dreary day, which was perfectly fine for me. Um, I was really, really nervous, um really nervous a lot of the people well some core people from my old church had came um so it was it was it was amazing you guys like really really amazing i it was such a humbling experience um sitting in the front in that seat next to the pastor was like this is it then they had me in the back in the room and they had an adjutant for me it was just it was so surreal because, like, I see when ministers and stuff, preachers come to different churches, and I, I, like, see how they work with them. And I've always wondered, like, how did it feel? And I actually was able to, like, be in that position to, like, wow, like, this, this is crazy. Um, my first lady ended up coming to the service as well as the youth pastor, who was also the pastor of administration, a.k.a. my bro. Yeah. And speaking of, my bro does have a channel with his wife. Um, I think they call it Finally Forever Wilson, so I will leave a link to that. You can just click the on screen to go check out their channel. It's really cool, but, um, yeah, and, um, it was just, I don't, I don't, it was amazing, you guys. I had such an amazing time. Um, now, so I did take this portfolio, which you guys would have seen in the video, um, and, um, I took a copy of the flyer. My picture is right there. 
So I have that for memory's sakes. Um, they did give me something which I wasn't expecting. Um, honestly, I wasn't. I just wanted to go and give a word. I did give the word. Um, it was about 20 minutes, not 30. But um, five pages of stuff and it was a 20 minute word actually it was actually 15 minutes of a word and then i did a testimony for like five minutes but um it actually worked out well because my first lady i didn't know she was coming and she was coming from another church that she was at with my bishop um, my bishop obviously couldn't come but he wanted to come so bad when i spoke to him um but yeah she ended up coming so we had to stall around for her to come so by the time she came it was probably about 4 30 ish or something like that so I did good because their services ended at 5, so I pretty much allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me. And um, it wasn't a lot of youth, wasn't a lot of adults, but at the end of the service, I had one person come up to me and tell me how she cried at the end of the service. I've actually had plenty of people come at the end of the service and tell me how it really helped and impacted them. Um, but one lady actually came and told me she cried, and I, I didn't... It it was... it Yeah, it was just, wow. Um... You know, because, again, I was meant to speak to the youth, but it wasn't a lot of people with the ring. But for the youth and the adults to both be impacted by the word that I gave was just mind-blowing. Um, really mind-blowing. I was very excited. Very, um, I feel blessed to have also been asked to come back and speak at the church. Um, I was actually the first person that they had come out to speak at their church they've never had anybody speak at their church so I was the first which was amazing to me um <clears throat> it was like amazing to have been the first person there to speak a word and then to be invited back I um also got asked to speak at a youth conference next year in North Carolina so that's gonna be crazy and um I'm just I'm excited for what God is doing um as much as I had a struggle right now dang sermon if you've seen the sermon vlog you know it was a struggle um but just to see it all come together to see that god was able to speak through me to minister to other people not just the youth but to the adults as well was amazing i mean i cried y'all I, I i boohooed in the video like it was it was intense my first lady was very very proud of me um my youth pastor was also proud of me and um people from my old ministry that came were very proud of me too and it was like it was it was it was amazing like amazing and i'm excited for doing more of these engagements um i'm excited for where god is taking me i'm excited for the growth the humbling experience like I, no words no words to express how i feel you guys it's amazing and I would not be here right now without God if it was not for God because Lord knows I ran. I did stupid stuff and I ran some more and I kept running and I ignored him. And I just, when I finally just said yes and accepted it, to see things move the way they're moving is just mind-blowing. Like, mind-blowing. I encourage any of you. If you feel God calling you into ministry specifically... Don't run. You you can't run. You can. I tried for ten years. It didn't work. Um, those ten years could have been avoided if I would have just listened. But I ran. So if you're being called into ministry, be it an evangelist, a pastor, a youth pastor, a deaconess, a deacon, a dancer, a praise and worship singer, like anything within ministry. I'm not just talking about leadership, but I mean anything ministry wise. If he's calling you to help with the youth church or whatever, do it. Don't run because when you run, you just make it. Uh, a really just long journey for yourself and in the end you're still going to do what he called you to do so it's just like why run and um i just i feel so blessed um to have had given my first like out of ministry sermon now i still haven't officially spoken at my church yet it's gonna be nerve-wracking when i do um, but I haven't really spoken in my ministry yet. I gave like a 10 minute, 15, 12 minute, um, sermon net, but I've never really like did a full sermon. Um, and I did learn some things when, you know, I spoke on Sunday because five pages, keep in mind, it's only five pages because I bumped up the font size and all of that. Um, if I would have kept the font to a normal 12, kept it single space, it's like three pages. So I should have thought that through. 
Um, but now I know when I'm actually writing my sermon, I'm going to completely write it out at least to six pages long and then I can then bump up the font because my sermon was literally about 15 20 minutes I wanted to aim for 30 but it was 15 20 minutes so and that was only five well four and a half pages four and a quarter if you will pages of notes so I now know how to formulate it um and yeah it's just amazing for to hear people say that they were able to to, to glean from what I said and it's never about me never I always want it to be about God. Um, I always want God to use me as his mouthpiece. I always want him to use me to minister to his people. I never want it to be about me, me coming up the top of my head. Never that. Um, it's all about God, glorifying him, worshiping him, and giving my testimony where it fits in. And um, my first lady was very, very proud of me, and that meant a lot to me because I was I honestly was like ready for her to tell me like you know do this next time and do this but she was really proud of me and that like made my day and of course of course if it was not for my mother my mother went through a lot with me um and she was there with me in the room it was me and her in the room and it was just like so surreal because we've been through some craziness Oof. we've been through some craziness but to have my mother there um, was the best feeling ever. My mom is literally like my best friend, like legit. Um, so to have my mother there with my senior pastor, who's like my second mom, it was all that I could ask for. Like literally all that I could ask for. Um, my church was, when I, well, I went to church right after. My church was very, very happy for me and excited. Um, so yeah it was it was amazing i'm looking forward to doing more engagements speaking engagements at different ministries different programs and things like that i'm not gonna rush it but i'm looking forward to it um whenever god opens that door for me i'm looking forward to it um yeah i don't really know what else to say like it's it was great but um Hopefully, I can be back on schedule, clocking these videos out for you guys. Um, I do have videos set for this week coming up if things go well. Like I said, I have a lot of footage on my computer. It's just a matter of editing them. So, and editing takes forever. Like, it takes, like, an hour or two to record, but, like, to edit, it takes anywhere from, like, three to four hours. And then you gotta wait for it to render. Then you gotta upload it. Then you gotta put all the information in. <sighs> It's a hassle, but we're going to get it together. We're going to get back on point because I miss my family. And oh, for those who are a part of the Facebook group and are reading Redeeming Love with us, I have not been able to do the Facebook Live videos because it's just been hard to do them on Saturdays since my Saturdays have been like busy, just, just ministry and church. So in December, I'm going to pick a day in December and we're just going to have a Facebook Live Redeeming Love live party in a sense. Um, I may put some balloons up in the back. Who knows what I'm going to do. But um, I just want to have like a Facebook chat to talk about the book. Because a lot of you guys are truly enjoying the book and getting out some like a lot of stuff out of it. And I'm still slacking. I, I got to catch up. I'm listening to the audiobook as I'm reading, which is probably the problem for me. Because like reading the book is fine. Um, of course, this is not like a brand new read for me. It is a reread, but I read this like, I don't even know, a year or two ago. So I don't really remember everything. So I definitely want to take my time reading it and get some notes. That way when we have the live party, I can, we can discuss, you know, I could share some of my favorite quotes, some of my favorite points, what I got out of it. We can discuss it. I'll invite you ladies to come in on the video and chat with me. Like it's, it's going to be fun. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group, definitely join. Um, and if you are, stay on the lookout for that. Also for um, the month of January. So, excuse me, December. I have book boxes coming in December. I'm going to announce those soon. Um, basically, in the book box, it's going to be $50. You get a limited... I'm, I'm, I'm calling it limited edition, but it's just not a limited edition. It's a holiday shirt that I'm making for Daughter Up Increase that um, will be in red. You're going to get a DOI coffee mug in red. Um, you're going to get one of my favorite books, which is most likely going to be clean. You're going to get another book 
and then some bookmarks. I might throw in some additional things here and there, but it's a $50 box, and um, you're really just paying for the shirt and the mug and getting the books and stuff free. So that's that. Um, in January, we will not start John. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for that, and I apologize. But again, my months have been crazy. Bible study has been a little crazy for me. So yeah, um, we will be doing John chapter 6 starting in February. I have it all mapped out, so I'll have an announcement video on that specifically in January for you guys with the breakdown. But um, when we start John, we're going to do John straight through from 6 to 21. So if you haven't seen the first five chapters, check that out. Um, just click the on the screen to go to that playlist. Um, in January, we will be having um, a readathon type of challenge that I'm working on. Um, it's going to be a month long readathon with maybe 10 prompts and I'll make an announcement video about that, but it's going to be really fun and I'm super, super excited to put that together. I'm going to spend some time maybe next week organizing all of that and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Book club is going to have more information coming soon. We're going to start book club up in February because January is going to be the readathon. So yeah, actually I may include a book for January just as a buddy read for the readathon. Um, but official book club will start in February. I'm still working it out. But yeah, I think that's it for now. My camera's about to die. And um, yeah, so if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the family because I love everyone on this channel. My sisters, I don't call you guys subscribers, I call you guys sisters. I love you ladies so much. Um, and if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, whatever, leave them down below in the description box. I'm open to emails. If you want to email me, Facebook me, DM me on Instagram, all my information is down below. But I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.